Hey guys, how you going? Welcome to Hearns TV, and it's me again, Dan. Um, I'm going to do the usual thing. I'm going to take you through an unboxing video uh, today. And um, I'm going to show you now a really cool kit. Now, this one here is, um, this airplane played probably one of the most important parts in history and, and during the Second World War as well. And we all know who that is. It is the mighty B-29 Super Fortress right there. And uh, yeah, the B-29 was um, immense, absolutely immense. Um, high altitude uh, strategic bomber. Uh, during the Second World War, it was the it was pressurized and uh, yeah, immense bomb load. Um, was used by the uh, U.S. Air Force and then post World War II, um, about 87 of them were used by the uh, by the British Royal Air Force for um, only about four or five years. They called it the B-1 Washington. And between 1952 and 1956, two of them were actually used by the Australian Air Force for the purposes of research and development. Uh, yeah, okay. So um, yeah, we're gonna take a look inside the box and have a look at how, uh, what this kit is all about. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the B-29 as we go along. So yeah, let's have a look at the box art right here. And isn't it spectacular once again? Academy always do a very, very good job on the presentation on the front of the box. And this, of course, is a 72 scale, as you can see there. So it's going to be a pretty big kit because, um, once again, this was a huge plane. Right. Open it up. Chuck that over there. That one can go there. All right. Now, let's have a look at the instructions. First off, we've got, what are we here? Ah, this is the markings, you know, where you uh, put all the decal. As you can see there, there's a few different nose art options um, on this one, in black and white, and then booklets, uh, booklet instructions, black and white again, and fold out, yes, once again, like, I would say the fold-out instructions like this when it comes to big kits like bombers, uh, they're um, usually a little bit more a little bit more helpful than um, page than the, than the page ones because you can have it open like like that in front of you. Yes, very good. Thank you, Academy, for for doing that. All right, now let's have a look at this kit, and we'll start with the fuselage here. Now, as you can see, 72 scales, and it's pretty big. Pretty big indeed. Um, yeah, and there's the, this is where the cockpit was and the wing roots there. And this is the viewing port. Um, there weren't that many gunners, actually, on a, um, on a B-29, even though there were quite a few uh, gun turrets, actually. Um, like I said, this thing was pressurized. Uh, unlike the B-17, the B-24, and the other uh, US heavy bombers. Um, it, yeah, the, they weren't pressurized, but this one was, so it could go to higher altitudes. And these bubbles here, there and there, and there was also one underneath. Uh, one underneath, should I say, that was actually the top, uh, that was actually the top turret. Uh, yeah, they would, um, they would look out of the windows and um, they, had, they would use remote controls uh, to control the guns. Um, uh, so they uh, maintain the accuracy and they didn't have the intense noise of um, the guns firing just uh, just next to their heads and um, they didn't have the intense cold of having open windows and being uh, uh, at uh, high altitudes there was about 10 um, 50 caliber machine guns for defense on the b29 and um, there was even like 20 millimeter cannons in the tail as well and later variants now i'll hold this up so as you can see not really, not a lot of, no rivets really on this one, but definitely good panel lining there all along the length of the fuselage. And here we have the doors that would probably be for the bomb bay. They would just go there and there. And then the, uh, some of the interior, like the bulkheads just there. And there, that's the tail barbette just there that would be firing from the rear. And from what I can see there, there's actually three, uh, there's three holes there to um, put uh, to put guns in. So it could have been you could have either the option of the 50 caliber guns or the 20 millimeter cannon. There, yeah, 
Very nice. So the B29 was first flown in 1942, entered service in 1944, and I think just under 4,000 of them were made in um, all of their variants, and they were finally retired from US service in 1960. Now let's get back to the kit. Here we've got the, um, the wings, look at the wingspan on that. So double that is, um, is how big this kit's gonna be. Yeah, cool. And then the tail planes there. And once again, no rivets, just the, just the panel lines there. And uh, this looks to be the cockpit where the uh, pilot and co-pilot would, uh, would be sitting there. And some um, more of the interior. And here, this looks like, I think this was the tube. Now, um, where the front of the fus uh, fuselage was, where the uh, pilot and uh, co-pilot and well, would sit and then uh, behind them was two immense bomb bays and to get from there at that point to the rear of the plane where the tail gunner was there was this little tunnel that went um, uh, in between and over the top of the bomb bays that you had to crawl through and I think that is it just there excellent so there's a lot of interior detail fantastic and then the other wing oh it's just more of the same so there's the other wing. There's one of the uh, one of the, uh, the the edges or the the end, should I say, of where one of the uh, one of the engine nacelles would be. And here we have some of the gun turrets just there, landing landing gear there, and the tires, tail planes, because they come in two parts. I should have, should have uh, should have shown you on on the other one. They're not uh, not one solid piece tail plane. They're in two parts. And then more of the interior as well. Now, as a heavy bomber, the uh, B-29 on a short mission uh, could carry about 9,200 kilos worth of high explosive bombs. And on a long range mission, it usually had uh, around uh, 2,300, I think. And it's had uh, a range of about, uh, about five, just over 5,000 kilometers, I think. Now let's have a look at more of more of the kit just there. Ah, the tail, and that's the yeah where the tail gunner would be would be looking out of. And here we have the the rear parts of the wing just there, and the, the uh, bulge for the uh, for the engine nacelle, and where the um, the landing gear would. Uh, recess back into back into the aircraft tricycle landing gear actually on um, on the B29 and here is the covers or the engine cowlings just there and more of the the rear of the wings and this looks like to be the doors of where of where the uh, landing gear would cover and another one of the gun turrets just there yeah once again no rivets no rivet details, but definitely excellent and, and clear panel lining. Okay, let's have a look what we got here. Ah, here we have the, uh, the engine hubs there, just there. Four huge engines on, um, on the B-29. The engines are actually quite problematic to begin with. Um, and uh, there were fears that the investment into the B-29 was uh, not going to work. And there was another a heavy bomber called the Dominator that was also being produced at the same time. Nowhere near in as many numbers, but just in case this one didn't work as they th were hoping it was going to. And there you have the propellers, four blade propellers on the, yeah, and there's the join to the blades again. Yeah, would have been nicer if they were into the dead center. And then this, this I was actually really surprised to see. This there. That looks like a refueling probe uh, to me. The one that descends from the uh, back of the aircraft down like that. And then another plane flies up and refuels at the very tip there. The B-29 was actually used as an in-flight refueler as well late in, its, uh, late in its service. But yeah, I wasn't expecting... I wasn't expecting to see that on this kit. Oh, you could probably, by all counts, you can turn it into a... Um, you can turn it into an in-flight refueler as well. Cool, cool. And then what do we got here? Ah, 
we're starting to get to the my favorite part here the heavy landing gear it goes under the wing and here the guns the guns that would stick stick out of the turrets and uh, shoot at uh, the opposition uh, coming to get them and there's more of the guns there as well excellent very fine detail on um on this kit and um like I've, I've said this for a couple of others the joints on the sprues to the pieces are actually very thin very thin so easy to cut through not much to sand back excellent uh, and there's uh Oh, the very small details there. I don't know if the camera can show it, but these uh, will go into the into the turrets. These is where the two machine guns would be sticking out from, and there we have the seats for the seats for the crew members. There, very very cool. Alrighty, ah, the bomb load. Look at that. All of these go into the belly of this enormous beast. And then fly over its target and drop it on the uh, on the opposition below. Wow, quite a lot there. And then, lastly, like I try not, don't like to take these out of the plastic, but um, there's the canopy. Oh, well, the canopy, but the front of the aircraft where um, the pilot and co-pilot would uh, be looking out of. There's the very front, the nose of the bombardier doing the aiming. And then there's of course the uh, the uh, the viewing ports for the uh, for the gunners to be uh, looking out for and finding the uh, fighters that were coming to intercept them. And then lastly, last of all, the decal, obvious U.S. Air Force markings, just there, and like I said, various different nose art that you can put on the front of this one. Yeah, excellent. And then all of the rest of the. Uh, the rest of the marking just there to complete your complete your model yeah very nice uh big kit 72 scale for a, a big plane but not overly complex so this this could be for your um either an experienced model that's just a big fan of the b29 or someone that's oh, sort of midweight not necessarily a beginner but someone who's uh you know not to done a few model kits and looking at something doing doing something big and impressive yeah Academy, well done on this one. Uh, just before I go, to tell you about the B-29 is um, the thing it's most remembered for. Uh, obviously, it took um, it was the plane that was the delivery method for the two atomic bombs that were dropped on Japan, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the only nuclear weapons to ever be used in combat. And the B-29 is the only aircraft ever to have been the delivery system for said uh terrible terrible weapons but um what a, lot, what a lot of people don't know is um the cost of um designing and manufacture or the development developing of the b29 cost nearly twice as much as um as uh testing and developing the nuclear weapons themselves nearly twice as much um, it was the most expensive program of the Second World War. It cost a whopping $3 billion in 19, 1940s money. Um, and in today's money, that is somewhere in the area of 45 to $47 billion, uh, on, on one aircraft project. That was an immense amount of money for, the, um, uh, for, uh, for that point in time. But yeah, but now the uh, B-29s um, passed into history and... Um, what a huge legacy um, that it has. Took the world into the, uh, the nuclear era. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, like I always say, I love making these videos. So, you know, like and subscribe, leave a comment. Um, if you have any aircraft, tanks or warships that you would like for me to do an unboxing for, I would love to hear, I would love to hear your feedback and I'll definitely do one if, um, if it's one that you want to watch. So cool, cool. Anyway, I hope to see you in the store sometime soon. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And as always, rock and roll, guys. Yeah.